<laughs> you have been teaching yoga for 10 years. 10 years. I think I've, I'm about the same. I had something come up on my Facebook memories the other day that showed me, but I, it's about 10 years. So we were in a really interesting conversation the other day about kind of what comes after yoga, yoga 2.0. We've had a lot of conversations about who yoga is good for, who yoga is not necessarily good for, how yoga is amazing, and how yoga can be limiting. Uh -huh. So you started in a fitness, fitness apprenticeship. Now yoga is in every way fitness, but the type of fitness that you're getting into is like the next thing you do after yoga. In your mind, what are what are some of the big aha moments that you've come up with since you started this apprenticeship at Siva and uh, learning what do I where do I take my yoga practice from here? I've learned a lot about carrying weight mindfully. It's mm -hmm. great. Um, I think yoga set me up. Uh, to understand alignment of the skeletal structure. Um, however, uh, it got to a point for me where, um, and particularly after having a baby with hormones that, that come with that, elastin hormones, and they make you even more flexible, um, I really needed a little bit more of a strengthening workout. Um, as well as becoming 40, now I need a little bit more mindfulness in, in the functionality of workout. So some of our, our block stepping exercises that we'll do, literally just being able to use your whole foot and, and power, power off of the floor. You know, so, so I guess uh, the bursts of energy that I get yeah. to use, like explosive movements. Mm -hmm. um, That's not something you find in, in yoga. No. Yeah, I remember yoga was the mind blower to me. Like, I, it allowed me to go slow enough that I could get in my body and figure out what was going on. Now, don't get me wrong, I had a great instructor, Nicole Brown, who was able to guide me through what was going on because you just don't know what you don't know and right. have somebody sit there and point these things out to you is very powerful yoga opened up the doorway and it was the foundation that I was able to build more and more weight or more and more explosive power or something like that and that's and people look at those ideas like I don't want to lift weights I don't want to bulk up you mm -hmm. hear that all the time I or agree you hear a lot of times hey Johanna how are you or you hear a lot of times that uh, you know they just don't want to work that hard because mm -hmm. when you do something explosive or powerful, your heart rate is in your throat, and if you haven't had it there before, your nervous system thinks you're dying. Right, and that's scary. And I think yoga gives you a really, really good tools mm -hmm. for regulating your nervous system, mm -hmm. um, just with the breathing and moving at the same time. Yep. Um, what I've, I've really enjoyed, though, being able to see how, um, by paying attention to my alignment and being aware of how the nervous system fluctuates, just depending on movement or your environment or situation, um, how you can utilize your, your structure to... It'll get you far. <laughs> to jump, to throw, to... Do all of those do things, many other things that we were doing as children um, that we don't want to do as grown ups. That we don't want to do as, as yeah, exactly. That we don't want to do as adults. And um, so it's from what I've experienced differently at Siva and with more of a fitness is it has um, taken all of these tools and practices that I had in yoga and gotten. And now I kind of get to play with them a little bit more. It's, That's right. It's it, fun. It's free. Mm -hmm. I, I think you brought up a really good point. Your structures build safety. 
even running is a structure. It's a constantly moving structure, mm -hmm. but if my bones are all in the right alignment, then it can handle that movement mm -hmm. safely. You know, you learn something like a, a downward facing dog in yoga, as your body starts to loosen up in those tight places, mm -hmm. that structure just becomes more and more straight lined and yes. becomes better for you. It's a process to get there. But then once you get there, once the body knows how to build that structure, mm -hmm. then it's about conditioning that structure to stay lo stronger for a longer period of time. And mm -hmm. this is how we fight aging, mm -hmm. so to speak. I struggle with a lot of people in their perception of yoga. And I've struggled with my own perception of yoga, especially starting out as this is just all I need. This is perfect. Absolutely. It's a great starting point and mm -hmm. it's a great maintenance. Like just to wake up every day and do a yoga practice. That's super powerful. Mm -hmm. If we're really talking about how my body works and how to keep it from breaking down. Yeah. Then like you said, you got to lift some heavy things every uh. now and then to strengthen your joints, to strengthen the areas around them. You have to move a little faster uh -huh. sometimes. I, this is one of, I think, my aha moments with, um, you know, I, I will keep a yoga, a yoga practice. It is it is something that I think I do even off of a mat, waking Me up too. and just kind of moving through where I might feel a little sticky from the night of sleeping, mm -hmm. where, you know, where things start to just kind of lay down in your body that need to be moved around. Mm -hmm. um, but... Practicing yoga, your body, like you said in Down Dog, your body starts to remember where it's been. And eventually, once you start to create space, you have a solid structure. And your body remembers it, and it keeps coming back to that. However, um, I never thought I could do a pull-up before. Mm -hmm. Because in a yoga practice, I wasn't, that just wasn't part of anything that we would put ourselves in There's the situation no to do. There's yeah. no pull-up pose. Yeah. Right, we don't stop and grab the rings. However, about three weeks ago, I realized um, by practicing these human fit workouts that I can do a pull-up. In fact, I can do many pull-ups, mm -hmm. but I just, I hadn't been packing my structure or putting myself in the situation yeah. to do that, even though my body was strong enough. Mm -hmm. I just didn't actually know how to use it. Yet yoga is, once again, it's like... Yoga has just been giving people these gifts, mm -hmm. but then <laughs> they don't know what to do with right, the gift. Yes, and, and a lot of it because they just haven't been put in the situation to like you don't do a pull, you don't have a pull up bar in yoga class. There's no pull up pose, so you're right. never learning how to pull your body weight, and your pulling muscles are half of your muscular function. Right, right, mm -hmm. and we just it's really hard to do pulling muscles in yoga. I don't you, know one pose where I did do a pulling. <sighs> You kind of get a little bit of it going from your plank to up dog. Yeah, like a boat, like, like even like a you're boat pulling pose. Pulling through a little bit. If I'm rowing a boat or something, yeah, maybe you'll get some. You'll get some some of that downward pull in there for sure. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, and we've talked, this has been brought up with us at Siva before, is getting people to differentiate the difference, differentiate the difference to make the differentiation between. Uh, activity and exercise mm -hmm. yoga when, ev when everybody starts yoga if you're out of shape yoga is exercise absolutely like it knock you on your butt sweating everybody around shaking. you's all calm and you're shaking it and sweating <laughs> and like how this is the worst thing i've ever you want done. to run out the room and exactly right <laughs> and i've seen bodybuilders who you know you put them in a down dog and they, they become kittens you know mm -hmm. they just <laughs> yep. they can't do it i've seen it so it's hard work but then the body adapts like it always does and it's not and it's not necessarily an exercise for everybody anymore mm -hmm. it becomes an activity mm -hmm. it's, it's you're active but your heart rate is not having an exercise effect your muscles aren't having an exercise effect so you know we want if, if you decide you want to keep moving the needle you're going to have to put some weights in your hands or you're going to have to start going faster or conditioning something in a in a high repetition yep. type of sequence. And that's where everybody kind of has breaks yeah. a lot of times. And I really want people who, who have embraced getting back in their body with yoga to know that yoga is amazing. Don't abandon your yoga practice. But once 
it plateaus and becomes an activity, ask yourself, okay, am I cool here? Right. If you're cool here, be cool there. Right. right. Now, granted, I will I will make the argument that you still got to lift heavy things in order for your muscles not to deteriorate as you get older. But just rec- just put it where it needs to be. If you're still wanting to move forward, if you've got goals, or if you're really trying to slow down that aging process, process, you're going to have to get into some what people would call fitness. Right. And if you're lucky, you've got functional fitness people that are popping up in the country. Mm-hmm. We're one of them. Yes. We do that. <laughs> um, but then you can really make a mindful transition into some of those things that are scary, especially if you've had a great background in yoga and building those structures. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how many months have you been into this fitness game now? Since, I think, the end of March. Uh, so April, May, June, July, we're August, about five months now. And you're still a yogi at heart. I, There's um, no doubt about that. One of the things I love about yoga is uh, I feel like I understood Leonardo da Vinci when I got into the, you know, the body symmetry sure, yeah. and our, our alignments yeah. and, and kind of tying science with art with humanity. Yoga is a good bridge for that. Together. And it, 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 I think that that's a beautiful practice I have an artist heart. And so I love the shapes Mm -hmm. that our bodies make. Um, There's breath work and mind work too. The breath and the mind work for me with yoga is huge. And I think that that has been, um, after the, the physical body, after I started, uh, kind of training my physical body to remember its structure, Mm -hmm. most of the yoga benefits that I received were from my breathing and being able to process through emotions and understanding the nature of, of the mind that it thinks and that we're able to, um, because like you said, things slow down when you start to practice yoga inside of your mind. And so you're able to, um, trace your thoughts and, 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 and track them a little bit easier. It's easier to do it. If you're doing it fast, you can't see it mm-hmm. how it's unfolding. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like, I don't. I wanted to hire and bring on trainers that had self care as their foundation. Um, I love working out hard. Yeah. I love jumping up and down and grunting and all that kind of stuff. But my foundation mm-hmm. was in yoga. Yeah. So all that grunting and jumping up and down has a has a functionality yep. that was rooted in safety. Like I, I, it took me years to get to that place. Yeah. safely but it all started with taking long deep breaths in a in a tense pose mm-hmm. and learning how to deal with stress in a slowed down environment and now i deal with stress in a fast and furious environment and it's all the same thing it's just you got to start somewhere i think that's what i've enjoyed big time over the past five months is the variety of different types of workouts that we do do mm-hmm. do do <laughs> Live TV, what can you do? <laughs> um, but uh, being able to learn to breathe differently. Like in, in yoga, we practice a lot of inhaling, exhaling through the nose, which works really well to calm your nervous system down. Which most Westerners need. When I start to do something explosive, though, like we're, we're doing jump squats or um, we're on the parallel ball bars and we're... Uh, what, what is the one where we do the sit-throughs? Oh, the L-sits. The, pi- the L-sits, yeah, you know, and really, really getting yourself to challenge that way. But it's it's this moving, repetitive structure to where it's like your nervous system is taxed. If you're aware of that and, and you know what to do, then it's like I've learned all this different type of breath work. Yeah, how to use To your be able breath. to really fuel my breath and to track my nervous system when it is under mm-hmm. stress. The other concept that um, really I, I hadn't learned um, through yoga was the concept of torque Mm -hmm. and I realized it's there though it's inherent in yoga yeah it it, it is it's there it's not necessarily talked about or practiced as often I feel like um my inseam of my body is very strong and developed Mm -hmm. from yoga however there's this outer (laughs) um strength of the structure great way to put it yeah that um I really hadn't tapped into and I've been you know, religiously practicing yoga for 10 years now. Yeah. And, and when I started getting, um, onto the tack fit, Matt, and you 
pointed out this torque concept, I was like, oh, whoa, pulling everything out and making your structure even bigger and stronger so that there is this ability to then be able to take off, whether you're jumping, whether you're running, whether I'm in a push-up, there's just more power behind it. You're bringing a really good point uh, when you talk about going outward. Mm -hmm. I think yoga, especially in Western society, it's one of its greatest gifts is to pull people back inward. Mm -hmm. And you get come back in and you find this that seed again you find that platform and then the idea is to build some strength with it so you can go back outward and that's a physical reality mm -hmm. as well as a metaphorical reality when it comes if I love the yoga community but there's a lot of imbalance in the yoga mm -hmm. community by people staying way too in life is obviously meant to be out but you have to empower yourself inward before you have the the courage and the and the skill set to yeah. move outward in a yogic way in a peaceful but strong way yeah balance is a tricky thing and you know the universe has two main cycles creation and destruction mm -hmm. and but one of them we all you know love is beautiful and the other one is seems to be tragic and makes us all scared it seems to be but one doesn't exist without the other and uh, I really want people uh, I, I really want my yoga brothers and sisters to not ever cap themselves off by their practice because one of the things that they embrace so much is the open-mindedness mm -hmm. and I, I, there's a lot of ways that we talk about that it, sweating and panting like you're talking about your breath work one of the problems I had was I was trained to breathe like <laughs> yeah. if it wasn't a 15 second breath I was <laughs> failing or I was going back to my old ways or something now I'll breathe a hundred different ways as long as it's distinctive conscientious and purposeful yeah that is it's useful it's it's pragmatic and yoga is supposed to be pragmatic and fitness and health is pragmatic and sometimes shit is heavy sometimes the world is fast yes sometimes the world is smooth and cool and i can just we can all just shavasana our way into the rest of the night totally but sometimes you wake up and the world is bam and bam you gotta bam, work bam, bam. you gotta be able to match pitch with the rest of the world yeah you you nailed it in my opinion as far as yoga and what it did for me is it taught me how to start using my body my mind my breath like how these machines work none of us really have a handbook and one of the things that you know I was practicing dedicated practice because I saw all of the benefits in myself my mind my emotions my body from a, a dedicated yoga practice however I've had so many aha moments because I didn't realize that there are so many other ways that our body is also meant to move is also meant to breathe that we have different styles of breathing depending on the situation it is not always called for or appropriate for you to just yeah it's, it's not. That's not the breath that's going to move make it worse you sometimes. through a situation. Well, you can just shut off and just go really deep into the, oh, just the breathing and, and just block out the rest of the situation that's actually going on around you. So you're just getting through it. You're not showing up and well, working powerful. through it, moving yeah. through it, like learning how to use this vessel even more optimally. And that's I'm I'm pretty passionate about that. So I'm I'm very grateful that I'm got to um, participate. Yeah, I'm yeah. grateful that this is where I am in my story to where I've had the opportunity to just learn more about myself, explore more about myself, so that I can hopefully help other people to to also learn these bodies a little bit better. <laughs> and on that, good job. <laughs>